From space, NASA discovered something unbelievable. Amid the charred land of Canada, a long green streak appeared, like a living scar. When zooming in, it turned out this wasn't a human-made structure, but a 2,800-foot-long beaver dam, twice as long as the Hoover Dam, and large enough to be seen from the ISS. This entire structure was built by beavers. It's been there for more than 50 years. Beavers turned a wasteland into an oasis, holding water, cooling the area, and reviving an entire watershed that both nature and humans had failed to restore. While the United States is experiencing severe drought, lakes drying up, rivers disappearing, and wildfires spreading across the West, the question is, what would happen if we brought beavers back? Could they save nature and even save us? Let's not beat around the bush. We'll start right now. Before Europeans set foot on this continent, the North American ecosystem truly belonged to beavers. Ecologists estimate there were once 250 to 4 to 100 million beaver ponds here, three to five times the number of natural lakes in all of Europe. Their dams stretched from Mexico to the Arctic, from the Atlantic to the Pacific. Their pond dam marsh networks once covered 8 to 12 percent of the United States, turning the continent into a massive natural water storage system. The USGS described this as a mega reservoir ecosystem, storing enough water to flood all of California, Oregon, and Washington. Beavers breed quickly, live in families, and each pair can have three to six kits per year. Under good conditions, their population can grow by 20 to 50 percent annually. That's why they once covered large river basins like the Missouri, Columbia, Colorado, and Street Lawrence. But what amazes scientists isn't just their numbers, it's their extraordinary ecological impact. Beaver dams slow down water flow, reduce flooding, let water seep into the ground, and recharge aquifers year-round. The sediment they trap creates the most fertile valleys. Native Americans used to dig irrigation ditches inspired by beavers, what they called the beaver irrigation system. A 2020 USGS study confirmed the moisture around beaver ponds is 3 to 100 percent higher, enough to prevent drought even in the hottest seasons. And the beaver's impact doesn't stop there. In areas with beaver dams, surface temperatures drop by 9 to 27 degrees Fahrenheit, turning the hottest places into natural cooling zones. Beaver dams slow down snowmelt, keeping the land moist through September, something no man-made structure can fully replicate. When beavers hold water, the entire ecosystem comes back to life. Salmon, ducks, otters, mink, migratory birds, and countless insects return to lands once thought dead. In short, beavers don't just build dams, they build climates, ecosystems, and bring life back to everything around them. But as you know, good things don't last forever. When the first Europeans arrived in North America, they didn't see a continent sustained by these master ecological engineers, they just saw money. Beaver pelts became the global currency of the 17th to 19th centuries. A beaver hat in London cost as much as a month's wages, making all of Europe addicted to this luxury item. Castorium, a scent gland oil from beavers, was used in perfumes, food, and medicine. France, England, and the Netherlands raced to control this soft gold, dragging native tribes into decades of bloody conflict known as the Beaver Wars. Nature was completely unprepared for this industrial-scale hunting frenzy. By 1900, only about 1 to 100,000 beavers were left on the entire continent, less than 1% of their pre-colonial numbers. This was one of the largest animal genocides in human history, yet few people know about it. When beavers disappeared, the consequences are what you still see today. The dams that once held water nourished the soil and protected watersheds vanished too. Streams began to erode deeply creating hydrological wounds that have lasted 200 years. Water tables dropped 3 to 10 feet below the surface, so groundwater wasn't replenished. Areas that once had hundreds of beaver ponds became dry gullies, unable to hold water through a single dry season. Salmon vanished from the Columbia and Colorado basins. Otters, ducks, and waterbirds, all species that depended on wetlands, collapsed. The ecosystem collapsed too. North America lost 80% of its wetlands. After that, water was no longer held or filtered. Floods got worse, droughts lasted longer, and farmland lost its ability to recover naturally. And finally, the economic toll today is staggering. The U.S. spends $25 to $40 billion a year on drought, flood, and erosion control 
200 to 400 times what it would cost if beavers were still around. Eventually, Americans realized the price of wiping out beavers was too high. But instead of immediately bringing beavers back, people chose the most familiar solution, copying nature. Honestly, I think this approach has its flaws. So, artificial beaver dams called Beaver Dam Analogs BDAs were created. These are just rows of wooden stakes and willow branches woven together, but they can still hold water, slow flow, and recharge groundwater. Hydrologists even admit this is basically copying the beaver's homework. But a mile of concrete dam costs $1.5 to $3 million. A mile of BDA is about $10,000, and a family of beavers does the same job for free and even maintains it for life. Ironically, in many parts of Idaho and Oregon, as soon as people finish building BDAs, beavers show up and fix them to their own standards. It sounds funny, but they plug holes, reinforce with mud, and adjust the depth and flow. But the results are undeniable. Watersheds with BDAs show higher soil moisture and revived riverside vegetation just much slower, and if scaled up, it would be extremely expensive. And we all know, no human design, no matter how smart, can match the instincts of a beaver. If you think beavers just drag logs to block water, you're seriously underestimating them. Their small brains have a kind of innate hydrological intelligence that humans still can't replicate. A famous experiment at the University of Guelph showed, just play the sound of running water in the woods, and beavers will immediately drag branches over to damn the speaker. This proves they don't just see water, they can hear the sound of hydrological risk, and what they build isn't random. Beaver dams are usually curved, dispersing pressure a design humans took centuries to fully understand. They also create intentional leak layers to safely let out water, reducing the risk of dam failure during floods. When the flow is strong, beavers raise the dam. When it's weak, they widen it to hold more water. Beavers even dig diversion channels to reduce pressure on the mainstream and create wet meadows on both sides, where grass grows faster and attracts deer, waterfowl, and countless insects. If you want to see the most vivid example of how beavers can transform a landscape, look at Susie Creek in Nevada. It used to be a true dead zone. Before beavers returned, Susie was just a dry ditch in the desert. The soil was as hard as concrete, rocks exposed, no fish, no birds, no aquatic insects. Locals said in summer, you could walk the creek bed without getting your shoes wet, but then beavers quietly appeared, unnoticed. Night after night, they turned the dead stream into a completely different world. Within a few years, 139 beaver dams sprang up like magic. Water no longer ran off, but was held, spread out, and soaked into the ground. The result, over 100 acres of new vegetation, grass, willows, and riverside trees grew green again. 20 acres of water appeared, forming a chain of small ponds. Ecologists described the area as an oasis that doubles in size every season. And then, life returned. Trout came back for the first time in nearly a century. Geese landed on the new ponds, cranes, ducks, herons, and dozens of waterbird species reappeared. Minks, badgers, otter species once completely gone returned with the water. Susie Creek didn't just come back to life, it became a life-producing machine. The impact on people was clear. The now green pastures made it easier to raise livestock, the steady water supply cut irrigation costs, and the land became rich with moisture again. But that's what beavers can do with a stream, what about deserts or drylands? What can beavers do there? Let's look at Utah, where beavers managed to create rivers in the desert. Utah was once among the driest states in America. The land was deeply eroded, streams were just shallow red gullies, and riverside ecosystems were described as on life support. No hydrologist believed it could recover without hundreds of millions of dollars. But then 47 beavers were relocated. They were microchipped, checked for health, and released into the Price River and San Rafael watersheds areas NASA had called desertification hotspots. No one expected much. But after just 12 to 18 months, a series of incredible changes began. They built dams at a nearly supernatural pace. A 16-foot dam could go up in a single night. When the flow was strong, they raised the dam to protect their lodge. When water was too high, they dug channels to reduce flood pressure. No blueprints, no machines, 
just instinct. Water spread out on both sides, creating green dots in the desert. Riverside vegetation exploded. Grass, willows, alders, grew back where there'd only been dead soil. What amazed scientists most was the return of trout, a species that had vanished because the stream beds were too deeply eroded. When beavers raised the water level, the stream reconnected, cool water returned, and trout appeared after just two growing seasons. A rancher in Emory said, they work all night and don't ask for a dime. What engineer can do that? You might not notice, but beaver lodges have underwater entrances to keep out wolves, bears, and coyotes. Inside are two rooms, a dry sleeping chamber raised above the water, and a food storage room ventilated by tunnels they dig themselves. Beaver lodges work like insulated homes, warm in winter, cool in summer. After seeing how 47 beavers turned two Utah desert watersheds into vibrant green ribbons, scientists started asking a bigger question. If beavers can revive water, can they protect land from other disasters like wildfires? The clearest answer is in California, where wildfires are no longer accidents, but an annual season. Amid scorched mountains, towns turned to ash, and millions of acres burned, ecologists were surprised to find green patches surviving like islands in a sea of fire. When they checked satellite images and did field surveys, a simple truth appeared. Every surviving patch had beavers. Beaver ponds held water, their dams slowed flow, the soil stayed moist, and moisture is the one thing fire can't cross. Research in Oregon and Washington shows beaver areas recover from fire four to five times faster, while places without beavers can take years to turn green again. A famous photo from 2022 showed two areas just yards apart. The beaver dam side was still lush after eight weeks, while the other was just black ash. Beaver ponds hold water three to ten times longer than natural streams. In 2020, when California had its worst wildfire season in history, over 4.2 million acres burned places where beavers had quietly returned, still had green willows, alders, and cottonwoods among the ashes. In many canyons, beaver presence slowed fire spread by up to 80%, a number that even California's wildfire management agency had to admit. No artificial solution creates firebreaks as well as beavers. That's why, after 75 years of local extinction, California officially reintroduced beavers in 2022. Remember how we said beavers have an instinct to prevent floods? Pickering, a small town of 7 to 1,000 in northern England, is the clearest example. For decades, this town was constantly flooded, sitting at the base of steep hills in the North York Moors. When heavy rains came, water rushed down fast, funneling straight into Pickering in just hours. With no wetlands to hold water, no lowlands to buffer it, and no budget for multi-million pound artificial dams, Pickering was basically a giant flood bowl, so they chose a solution, release beavers. Just one beaver family was reintroduced into the valley. In less than two years, they built a 230-foot dam of wood, mud, and branches right where hydrologists call the energy break point. This species instinct always picks natural bottlenecks for dam building, where blocking one spot can control the whole flood. The results stunned local officials. Storms that used to flood Pickering were now completely held back. The beaver dam slowed the water, forcing it to spread into meadows on both sides and soak into the ground instead of rushing into town. This didn't just prevent floods, it revived the landscape. Riverside soils held moisture better, water birds returned, and amphibians reappeared after years away. As beaver success spread, Europe began seeing a strange new trend, beaver bombing people secretly releasing beavers into forests, streams, and dry watersheds. Not a crime wave, but a civil disobedience conservation movement. England, Scotland, Germany, the Netherlands all reported dozens of mystery beavers, showing up, building dams, creating ponds, and reviving entire river systems, with no one knowing who brought them. In Somerset, a family of 11 beavers suddenly appeared in a man-made lake, in Baden-Württemberg, Germany, they showed up in a canal with no official reintroduction program. Officials admitted, we don't know who released them. The movement grew as more scientific data came in. In Devon, where people once worried beavers would cause floods, the opposite happened. Flood peaks dropped 30 to 60%, erosion dropped 80%, and valleys stayed moist 
through the 2018 to 2022 European drought so much that Copernicus satellite images showed beaver areas still green while the rest of Europe turned brown. Oxford University concluded, areas with beavers retain 1 to 100 to 3 to 100 percent more groundwater. Even more notable, this movement isn't just in Europe. In the U.S., especially California and Washington, where wildfires and droughts are getting worse, locals have started quietly bringing beavers back to dry streams to create natural fire breaks. After a few months, secret ponds appear, providing shelter for wildlife whenever fire sweeps through valleys. But not everyone is grateful for these dams and beavers. In fact, in many places, government reaction is the opposite. In Scotland, fears that beavers would flood farmland led the government to allow legal shooting. In just two years, over 1 to 100 beavers were killed, sparking national outrage. This only fueled the beaver bombing movement illegal releases more than ever. In the U.S., things aren't much better. According to USDA reports, beavers cause 1 to 100 to 3 to 100 million dollars in damage each year, flooding rural roads, blocking irrigation ditches, cutting valuable timber, and sometimes damaging small infrastructure. A Montana farmer told CBS News, Beavers wreck everything we build. They don't understand property lines. But on the other side, conservationists push back hard. Beavers aren't wrecking things, they're fixing the ecological mistakes humans made. The UK's Environment Agency even published data. In watersheds with beavers, flood control costs drop by up to 80% because natural dams hold water upstream. But even this positive science isn't enough to ease the conflict. The tension has gotten so bad, it's gone to court. A group of farmers sued the government, claiming beaver reintroduction flooded their pastures. Environmental groups countersued, accusing the government of killing beavers without assessing ecological impact. Both sides believe they're protecting the land's future. And the government? Completely stuck. To officially reintroduce beavers, they need dozens of signatures, environmental impact assessments, community meetings, and still end up facing opposition from both sides. So many places just do nothing. Meanwhile, to reduce conflict, engineers have developed beaver-proof technology. Beaver deceivers, flow devices, smart water pipes, anti-block valves, even AI cameras to predict where dams might be built. But amid all the arguments, lawsuits, conflicts, damages, and benefits, America still faces a bigger problem. Washington, Oregon, California, and Colorado the four states hit hardest by climate change are considering using beavers as a statewide climate adaptation tool, not just as a regular wild animal, but as a free ecological engineering team that can do what man-made structures never fully can. And finally, I want to ask you a question that America may have to answer in the coming years. Do we have the courage to hand over control of water, the most precious resource of this century, to an animal? So what do you think? Which side are you on in this debate? Leave your comment, I really want to read every opinion. And if you want to hear more stories about nature, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. Because who knows, maybe you'll be the one whose voice helps change the planet's future.